Welcome, friend, to Life and Liberty Radio. I'm David Householder, here to encourage your pursuit of happiness. You and our partners exploring our shared spiritual journeys. Together, we're dreaming and working for a free society. Tell others today about our adventure in faith and freedom. So breathe in, open your mind, lift up your spirit. Let's get started. I'd like to thank you, the listener, for continuing to tune in and tell others about Life and Liberty Radio. It's been so much fun with just 39 episodes to see so many thousands of people connecting with the program. So what a great blessing to sit behind this microphone every day and to talk about the things which are most important to you and to me. And that is, of course, our our freedom. And freedom is not just one of those abstractions. Freedom is a practical, real, political, economic reality. But it's also a spiritual reality. And the truth is, my big passion in life is total freedom. Total freedom. Fr- freedom from soup to nuts. Freedom of our spirits, of our emotions, financially, economically, socially, and everything. Because I do believe that it is the Creator's plan A for us to live in freedom. And Martin Luther, 500 years ago, talked about freedom from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And the Old Testament talks about freedom from the Pharaoh, from underneath political and economic oppression. And I don't think you can really have one without another. People that are really spiritual say, well, as long as you're free spiritually, you don't have to worry about the other stuff. That doesn't matter. Well, 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 the truth is, it does matter. It's all one big ball of wax, our lives. And the Germans talk about Die Gedanken sind frei, one of these songs that they sing, and everybody knows it, and they get all misty-eyed. The thoughts are free. Even if you're not free politically, you're free to think as you will. Well, that's great. But uh, what about the rest of our lives? So I, I believe in holistic freedom, and I believe that we should live in a non-coercive society, a society that is voluntary. I believe that the church in the world is sort of a model of a voluntary society. You don't have to be there. You don't have to contribute. And there's a worldview which is cultivated, but is voluntary. And I believe that society should be that way, too. We don't uh, lock the doors and tell everyone, uh, you will give offering now or we won't let you out or we'll fine you. Well, but that's what we do in our society. So why is it okay to do that with taxes and not with our offering? But anyways, I'd like to talk about the spiritual side of things today since it is a Friday. And uh, Friday evening is a very holy time because the, the Creator on Friday evening instituted the Sabbath. And I do believe that the Sabbath is part of our DNA, part of our wiring. I could do a whole bunch of teaching on the importance of the numbers 7 and 8. And it's not just some weird Kabbalistic thing or, or numerology thing. Uh, the truth is that our whole calendar is based on stuff in the sky. We've got a day because that's when the light and the dark comes. We've got a month, because that's how long it takes the moon to go do its thing. We've got a year, because that's what it takes to go through the whole cycle of the seasons. So where did the week come from? There's nothing in the sky that tells us when we should have a week. But the truth is, we tried to turn it into 10 days during the French Revolution, and people said, no, no, it needs to be a week. And it seems to be universal throughout the human race, that a week is a perfect sort of rotation of our lives. And uh, it just makes sense to us in so many ways. If the week were to disappear, we would reinstitute it. Because we think in sevens and in eights. Do you remember the, the phone numbers when they were just seven numbers before the area codes? We could remember them. I used to know probably four or five dozen phone numbers by heart. And the minute it went to ten, then we were in trouble. Well, the truth is we have seven buckets in our heads, and people who teach reading to first graders, the experts, tell us that we have a seven-piece window that goes through the text as we read, and that's how we learn to read. The highest developed animals have only two buckets. Like chimpanzees, we get seven, which enables us to fix engines, to uh, do crafts, 
to put together cooking and all the different things that we do, we can keep seven things going at once. So we sort of have seven tracks in our minds. That's the way our minds are sort of wired up. And uh, that's that's the way our whole life is put together. In Germany, they say a week has eight days. You would say next week, you'd say heute in acht Tagen, today in eight days. And the Beatles, of course, sang eight days a week. And they wrote that in Hamburg, in Germany, where they worked for a long, long time, putting their musical skills together. So it's seven, eight, depending on how you count it. If you count both bookends, it's eight. If you count one bookend, it's seven. But uh, the truth is the octave is also based on the seven, eight thing. And that's the nature of change. In fact, the whole universe is put together in sevens and in eights. And uh, that's the very nature of change. The natural musical uh, scale is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. It brings you back to do, which is, of course, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. If you go look at a baptismal font in Europe, in the ancient cathedrals, the ancient churches, you'll see a stone baptismal font, and it will have eight sides. There's a, a sort of sense to which this is the natural order of things. That being the case, it's important to press the restart button every week. This is one of my biggest spiritual struggles because I am a classic overachiever. If there's something to be done, my first inclination is yes, I will do that because I enjoy doing things. I enjoy activity. Richard Branson, who was on the cover of a magazine this week, was asked, are you going to kind of step back now that you've achieved so much? And he said, why would I? What a waste. What a waste of all that I have learned. And I think this whole retirement culture thing is, is ridiculous. I don't see retirement in the Bible. And I see people, I see a lot of the founding fathers working well, the American founding fathers working well into their 80s, sitting on the respective Supreme Courts of their states and uh, doing all kinds of important, interesting things. So I encourage you to, to stay active and one of the best ways to stay active is to take a Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath doesn't start on Saturday morning. The Sabbath starts on Friday night at sunset. And that's the traditional Jewish way of looking at it. And I think it's an excellent idea from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday to stop working. And it's a big temptation to think you're too important to do that. Oh my goodness, I couldn't do that. I'm way too important. But the truth is, the Creator took a day off, too. So uh, the Creator is more important than all of us, and he led by example, as all good leaders do, taking a day of rest after creation. So I would invite you, I would invite you to take a Sabbath. And I want to be completely transparent with you that that's very difficult for me, but it's also very important to me. I look at the times in my life when I have been the most consequential in taking a Sabbath, and those are the those are the periods in my life where I was the most effective. Uh, all through graduate school, I put my books away on Friday night. My wife came home from work, and I did not open my books till Saturday night. And I walked through seminary, earning a Fulbright scholarship from the academic work that I did in graduate school. So, I would really invite you and invite myself also to uh, be a little bit more consequential in taking a Sabbath, and I would just invite you to uh, to really block those times out and to lie around a little bit and to get back in touch with your spirit. Let your soul catch up with your body if you've been tearing around all week. A blessed Sabbath to you. Shabbat Shalom from Huntington Beach, California, and may we all become a, a society of Sabbath keepers. Well, that's all for today on Life and Liberty Radio. Thanks so much for sharing this part of your spiritual journey with me. Now, the views on this program are not necessarily those of my advertisers, sponsors, places I work or do business with. They're purely my own, but I'm sharing them with you, so share your ideas with me. Write me on Twitter at Liberty House, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y-H-O-U-S, no E. Until next time, let's continue dreaming and working for a free and spiritually grounded society.